Hey guys, Jason here, and welcome to episode three of the Totomida Talk Show. As per usual, I am joined by my favorite DMP player, Andrew, and also by a very special guest, close personal friend of ours and supporter of the channel, Kelvin. So, Kelvin, do you want to introduce yourself, or do you want me to introduce you to the people? <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you can do it. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> right, okay. So, back in our middle school and high school days, Kelvin was one of the better, okay, one of the best DM players at our school. And since moving on from Duel Masters, he enjoyed legitimate success in Yu-Gi-Oh! and the Pokemon TCG, frequently top-cutting tournament after tournament. He's also into board games and video games, and he's just good at games in general. So I thought he would be perfect for this episode's topic, game design. Now, what do you guys think are qualities of a well-designed game? I guess let's start with Kelvin. That's, uh, uh, that was a pretty well, good introduction. Well, for me, I think... <laughs> Great introduction. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. <laughs> um, so flattered. Um, I think the, one of the most important ones is you need to have interactive gameplay. So that's that's why like I think Yu-Gi-Oh was quite good with that. You, you have trap cards and you have quick plays and stuff like that. And with yes. Duel Masters, you have fuel triggers. And that's that's the thing that I think po- when we play Pokemon, it, it kind of lacked a little bit of that. Because you sure. can't really do anything on your on your opponent's turn. There's mm-hmm. no um, there's no counterplay in that sort of sense. So yeah, having interactive gameplay, obviously balance is very important. And yeah, just the game has to be fun, obviously. It yeah, really hits that note. I I totally agree. Like that really resonates with me. Um, with Pokemon, you just sit there while your opponent does their ten minute turn, and then you're just like, "All right, <laughs> take once a you stay, break. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then once they pass, you're like, "Okay, now it's my turn to have a ten minute turn, right?" <laughs> yeah. So it, it's like, um, I guess Pokemon is more of a combo game. Yeah. Like you sit there and you and you combo into your your big plays. Mm. Um, but you kind of always have like a sit. Um, like routine on your yeah, turn exactly. that you do. Exactly. You you have to. Um, Excuse you, that. Andrew. Alcohol is turn three. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't yeah. spend you don't spend ten minutes searching your deck. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Or you don't draw like twenty cards on one turn. Okay, okay, that's fair. Okay, I th- sorry. Okay, I'm trying to mute too hard. Um, so, Kelvin mentioned some real good points. Uh, the game has to be interactive. So, you know, when it's not, because it's a turn based game, right? So, when it's not your turn, you kind of need to have a reason to care. Like, you don't want to just switch off for five minutes and then <laughs> look at the board and be like, what happened? Um, <laughs> yeah, some of the most like degenerate, like, like, bidders is, is where you, if you like, hit your own combo and you, and you win. That's the win condition. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, that, that's where, close to the um, worst. Yeah, it's 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 a bit different in, in Duel Masters where like you have to always be aware of like the opponent can sort of get in your way. You know, with, yeah, yeah. I, I think I think I like what you said about like having it a bit more interactive. I always liked like creature versus creature combat. Um, I, I yeah, always found yeah, that yeah. that sort of aspect of a of a game was quite interesting. Um, rather than you have all these like crazy. I don't know, abilities that you could clear your opponent's board the whole time <laughs> and set up like one turn kills. Yeah. That's the power creep. That's the power creep. <laughs> do, do your muscles will get there, right? Oh, ah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Especially like the new, adi- new, new sets. I think they're hitting I mean, I'm sure Dual Masters has already effects. gotten there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Exactly. We were just spared from it. Right, yeah. Yeah, if you look at the OCG, right? <laughs> So Andrew, yeah. do you have any do you have anything to add in terms of um, qualities that make for a well designed game outside of interaction and fun? Mm. Uh, I had a I was thinking about this earlier, and I was thinking like Duel Masters, you actually don't require much other equipment to set up, and that helps with just you can play the game anywhere. <laughs> you don't need like dices or, or calculators <laughs> like Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or, or a notepad where you write down yeah. 8,000. Yeah. <laughs> that's what the yeah. Yeah. So, so that's so a good like, point. It just makes it so much more, I guess, accessible, if that's the right word. Like you can play anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, changing room, changing room, dual masters. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, okay, you remember that, right? <laughs> I do remember that. Not my proudest moment. <laughs> 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 oh 
Um, but like with Yugi, I remember people were just like, "Okay, next turn you win, or next attack you win." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe yeah, Masters, you can actually oh see if the next attack will make you win, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, like Pokemon, you can't, you can never place. play. You can never play without dice. It's impossible. Yeah, it's impossible. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why we never got a magic, to be honest. Mm, yeah. yeah. Well, that actually, was... that's another, um, that's one thing that I did want to tackle. Um, Andrew mentioned accessibility, a different kind of accessibility to what I had in mind. But when I think accessibility, I think how easy or complicated is this game to learn? Uh, you know, you guys know me. I'm like not that into board games. That's probably my worst quality, right? And, um, <laughs> and the reason I'm not super into a lot of board games is because of the time invested needed to learn the rules, especially if it's just a one-off session. Whereas if the, you know, the game is simple enough to pick up, um, yeah. I think it becomes way better. And mm. I think Duel Masters mm -hmm. does that remarkably well. It yeah. really is magic for kiddies in a way. Mm. Yeah, and I guess that's how they, uh, that's how it was marketed, eh? Like that's that's the sort of market, I mean, with the cartoon and everything, that's, that's the sort of um, audience they were going for. That's definitely what they were going for in the West, yeah. Because Wizards, but, of, Wizards of the Coast was, or oh, they are, they are, yeah, 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 yeah. they are magic. They are yeah, magic. magic. <laughs> but on that on that same note, aside from accessibility, the game also needs to have sufficient depth. If it's too easy, um, it won't be fun for a lot of um, players, or like you will never even get to a point where you have high level players, right? So I guess mm -hmm. it comes mm -hmm. a very tricky balancing act of easy to learn but hard to master. Hashtag Super Smash Brothers Melee. No, oh, that's a, <laughs> <laughs> that's not what this is about. But yeah, easy, easy to learn, hard to master. That's, that's, I think, that's, a, that's a podcast for another time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, the, those are my thoughts on the thing. Um, the next question I was going to raise was, is Duel Masters a well-designed game? <laughs> we are all probably going to answer yes to that question, but let's break it down further. So maybe what I should be asking is, why is Duel Masters a well-designed game? Hmm. Another way to think about it is what makes a game not well-designed as well. Ten-minute um, turns. Yeah. <laughs> no no counterplay. Um. But even if you think about Yu-Gi-Oh!, like having, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh has like trap cards and I think they have like hand traps now as well where they have instant effects from the hand. Um, uh, but, but if you think about Yu-Gi-Oh, the, the key word that I always, uh, that comes up is OTKs. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know Duel Masters, you know, apart from your Bombazar decks and maybe maybe you can count cryptic totem as as one as well but but even with those decks they take time to set up so they're not really otks because you can still interact with the board um, yeah you can see it coming essentially um so i wouldn't count apart from bomber stars there, there isn't really any otks which is i think helps well with partially just the enjoyability of the game again um but also um making a well-designed game uh, yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. Like that's, they had a lot of like degenerate meters in Yu-Gi-Oh. That's why they had to like have the ban list. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah, like every I... every deck that kind of went out of control, the the ban list instantly hit it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I, I do think that Yu-Gi-Oh, like, well, at the time that we were playing anyway, like, I thought there was quite a diverse meta. Like, I think that's one of the other important things that makes Duel Masters good as well. Like. The meta is quite diverse. If you um, mm, just the, like number of viable decks, yeah. Like uh, I don't know what it was like at the top the top tournaments. Obviously, like whether it was like only bombers are control or, or whatever. Mm. But definitely at at a more casual level, you could see heaps of viable decks. Yeah, no, I definitely I, I definitely agree. Um, I think towards the end of the TCG, people were, you know, kind of had. Bombazai as the, the top dog um, most of yeah, the time yeah. but you know you would still have all these other other decks around the cool thing about um, the TCG is actually if you cut Bombazai out of the equation the meta is actually pretty wide open um, mm -hmm. I, I think there are a lot of decks that can be viable uh, whether control or mid range or even uh, super early game rush if you, if you remove it yeah the, the meta just gets blown, blown wide open Mm, well, that's what they did, right, in the, the OCG. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, I want to get into the accessibility aspect because 
Um, okay, we talked about we touched on magic a little bit earlier, and I think one thing Dual Masters does um, remarkably well is that it only has two classes of cards. Okay, at least in the TCG, there are only two classes of cards. Right, you have your spells and right. you have your mm-hmm. creatures, and then that's how you play the game. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. it also operates on a mana system, but both of your spells and your creatures can be cast as mana. So you really don't have uh, dead cards, so to speak, right? Because yeah. everything in your deck is theoretically usable at, a, at some point in the game. Whereas with Magic, I und- I, of course I don't play Magic, but I understand that there's this mechanic called lands, and the land cards are what you put into mana. But you can't like chuck your creatures or your spells into mana, so they have an additional card class in comparison to DM. Right. I think it's a really nuanced subtlety, but... I think it goes a long way in terms of uh, the enjoyability when it comes to playing and deck building. You know, just think to Pokemon where you just open with like a bunch of energies and supporters that you can only play one at a time, right? With Dual Masters, uh, you yeah. can build your deck in such a way that every card in your hand can be a live card at most points in the game. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's a really good point. Like with with energies and and lands, it's like a a prerequisite, right? You, you're forced into to putting that card in your deck. Yes. Whether or not you you want to or not, you don't really have that restriction with dual masters. I think it's quite good. Yeah. Actually, it's like super simple, super easy to get into, and I think the uh, the skill cap is actually decently high. Um, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, and it's quite a complex. Like the complexity kind of ramps up as you get deeper into the game. Yes, which which really like keeps keeps people's interest, right? If it was just, you know, very basic, very simple, would it be very fun to play for a long time? Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, but you can actually get like really complex like decks, as you guys have covered a lot of them already. I mean, some of those innovations, like you, I really have to spend time to to get into those. Yeah, especially especially when you. Look at the variety of control decks that you can build. <laughs> yeah, sure, kind sure. of gross, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so much regret. No. So, okay, uh, Kelvin, you, you've you mentioned um, ban lists already um, pretty early on into the video. And one thing that I wanted to get into was how different card games balance their games, either through a ban list like Dual Masters OCG, or Yu-Gi-Oh! versus Rotation, which is what Magic and Pokemon do. I understand that this is necessary to police the number of degenerate combos. I'm just wondering if you have any strong opinions on one vis-a-vis the other. I I actually prefer um, the Rotation. Okay, why is that? Um, I feel like it keeps the game fresh, and it allows you to come back into the game at a later stage without a gigantic pool of of cards to, to mm, pick that's from. true mm-hmm. like if I go mm-hmm. back to Yu-Gi-Oh now it's just over right I can't I don't I don't know what's what's good I have like uh, 10,000 cards to choose from and and it's sort of like it's the thing that I really looked forward to when we played um, Pokemon was like looking at the new sets what kind of combos I can make with it you know like mm. really getting into the the 300 or 400 cards that are available to you and trying to find some some road decks or or something that'll, that'll work I think it's a lot harder to do that in something like Yu-Gi-Oh! or, or Dual Masters OCG mm. Um, mm. and I also think the balancing issue is quite difficult with, with a ban list um, as opposed to just removing a whole a whole era and yeah definitely and sort of rotating cards but it could be it could be a mix where you keep keep sort of basic cards and just rotate mm, interesting that you mentioned yeah. that because oh, uh, yeah. I know Hearthstone Hearthstone does that now so they have yeah, uh, they yeah, have a yeah. base set and then they rotate like the the new sets that come out. Uh, yeah, rotate those I mean sets. otherwise you're gonna just release a a different Aquahocus every every set, right? <laughs> that's um, true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty like much like if you if you think about it, that that could be easily implemented in in Dual Masters as well, where you have you know the base set has all your um, like six mana short triggers and like Aquahocus and Bronze Arm. So, yeah, so I think yeah. like. I think that could work as a as a good model. That is, if um, <laughs> the TCG continued. <laughs> yeah, like if, right. if if it were me, I would probably like do keep keep the first set only, possibly, mm. and then mm-hmm. and then rotate the next five or so. Because then you 
you know, keep things fresh and as a way to generate income. Obviously, like, if, if you're making a game, you need to generate income. Yeah, generate income. Yeah, but, but I like how you, you, you also tied in uh, balance as well because it is a lot harder to balance um, when you have, like, a continuing... Your card pool gets larger and larger. There's all these interactions that you have to look out for and it's just harder to design cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think um, Lewis actually mentioned a point where like in, in Pokemon, if you don't know what the card does, it's probably because you haven't read it yet. In Yu-Gi-Oh, if you don't know what a card does, it's probably because there's an interaction that you've never seen before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like yeah. that's that's sort of the the issue as well. Like with Yu-Gi-Oh, I have to read like a, a, a small essay before I can see what the card does. Um, I don't know, it's just... Yeah, <laughs> I mean there is a meme where, um, like, where the card takes becomes too long, everyone refers it to like a Yu-Gi-Oh card because they always have like long takes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly. I mean, yeah, don't let it don't let it get to that, dude. Must don't let it get to that. <laughs> That's such a good point, and I'm really glad you brought it up because I never even considered it. And especially even in the context of the TCG, um, when you think about it, all of the sets after the first set are really there to introduce attackers, right? Like you have the Evo Crushinators and DM2, and then later on you have like Survivors and then Balmedius and then Wave Strikers and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool how you keep the same core, but you just cycle through your attackers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, it's like um, it's a way for them to introduce new mechanics. I suppose, without crowding the game. So, Andrew, um, are you also pro-rotation, or are you pro-ban list? Uh, I think for me, probably a mixture is, is a good is a good uh, good way. Um, okay. Because with a ban list, um, or if you think about it, maybe a better way, although they probably can't do this as often in, in like a physical card game setting, is uh, erratas. Oh, um, that's very dangerous yeah, territory. I, yeah. <laughs> I know Yu-Gi-Oh tried tried doing some right recently with um, yes. with like old cards, like Crush Card. I say recently; that was like years ago. But <laughs> <laughs> poor Asian. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I know Pokemon has done it quite a few times. Oh, okay. They've they've definitely um, eroded some some broken cards. Ah, oh, yes, I remember. Yeah, I remember yeah. some. Um, Wait, so Andrew, are you saying you would rather um, Dual Masters just errata cards yeah, when they're like, oh, yeah. it's getting too degenerate? Yeah, exactly. Um, if you think about what they've done with DM, DM plays, um, cards like you know, Bombers are, are much better. In, in the, like they're, they're actually cool cards now um, instead of being... Like, isn't it essentially errated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah okay. They're, they're errated. I mean, they keep the kind of the soul of the card intact. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is nice, uh, but yeah, they're completely different. Oh, okay, because I don't really have a strong opinion on this. Uh, personally, I don't really care that much because if I like the <laughs> game enough, I'm just gonna dump money into it like an idiot. But Doug, um, Doug from our Death Phoenix deck profile, he he messaged me when the third DMP set dropped, and he was very upset. He was like, "What have they done to Bombazar?" You know, <laughs> change and. You know, on one hand, I get what you're saying, Andrew. Like, let people keep the spirit of what they love. Let them continue to use the cards that would otherwise be gathering dust in their portfolio. Hmm. But what Doug told me was it sort of changing the card in itself just kills the spirit. Like, it doesn't matter how much or how little you change it, you kill the spirit. And you might as well just release a new card. That like So instead of like releasing Bomb Bazaar in the DMP form... Um, just release something like Bombazar's little brother, you know. Uh, I, I thought the the Bombazar was was a different card. I thought oh. it was actually a different card in, in DMPs. Is that I, I thought that's not the exact Bombazar Dragon of Destiny. Is am I? Well, am I they they still have the same artwork, and, and it's, yeah. it's still called the same card, but same oh, name, okay. same artwork. Yeah, but um, different. I thought text. it was actually a different card. Nah, uh, no. No. Um, yeah. But even even like extending from Bombazar, I was also referring to like when they like reduce the mana cost on cards or give give cards a bit more power, stuff like that. Um, I think is is much more healthier than just banning out the card. 
Oh, okay, I see what you mean. So instead of like, um, oh god, I can't think of an example. King Tsunami? Oh, is that, that's an example. Lost Soul to 8. Lost Soul to 8. But that's the yeah. reverse. You're making it... Also, you're saying instead of banning Lost Soul that costs 7, you just um, errata it to like, okay, yeah, yeah. all your Lost Souls cost 8 now. I don't yeah, care what yeah. the card says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, um, do you remember Wobaku in, in Yu-Gi-Oh? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, they changed it so that now your creatures can't get destroyed. Oh. I guess that's the um, the inherent problem with like trading card games is you you don't have the luxury of like, yeah. pushing out yeah. a balance patch. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's what I was referring to. Was it might not be physically possible. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's like I sort of understand. Like if I was say Wizards of the Coast, I would possibly look at a ridering like Bombazar, but yeah. like, you couldn't really go mm. and do like a whole set, right? Yeah, that's that's the challenge of a uh, yeah. Physically, it's it is quite tough. So out of interest, if you guys were, did work at Wizards of the Coast, uh, and you know, it was like Kelvin, Andrew, we're gonna revive Dual Masters, and you know we're gonna release Bombazar in a structure deck. Now naturally, this card's kind of degenerate. How would you rebalance it? <laughs> I think I know what Andrew's gonna say. Andrew's gonna be like, "Oh, I think what they're doing in DMP is fine." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how would you guys rebalance it? Um, hard to say. I'm not really a fan of like the second turn thing. Um, hmm. I feel like it's really like, as I said, there's like no counterplay to it. Yeah, and I don't really like cards that have no counter. I mean, I like if the cards are in the game. I love using the cards that have no counterplay because like they're broken, right? <laughs> but like, as from a gameplay design, like it's not um, something that I would. Or, or if you're the opponent. Condone. Yeah, if I'm the opponent, <laughs> I, I see bombers that come down, I'm like, oh my god, this guy again. Yeah, yeah. Ready to take me to town. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't, I'm not sure what changes I would I would put in, but like in, anything I do to it, I don't think people would like. Right. Um, especially like, yeah, as um, as Doug said, you know, don't want to change the, the soul of the card. I'd probably just destroy it. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew. Oh, okay, so Kelvin's uh, being very political. He's like, "Nah, I'm not gonna do anything. Um, I quit." So, <laughs> so Andrew, um, is my prediction correct, or uh, do you have any other ideas? Of course, of course. <laughs> DM plays is the best game ever. They have done nothing wrong, <laughs> except except pre patch diamond. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, yeah, I, I'm kind of I agree with Kelvin. Like, it's it's hard to think of a balance of these cards, um, especially when you really want to preserve um, again, like the soul of the soul of the card, but without making it too broken. And especially a fic that is broken as gaining an extra turn, it's like almost impossible to make that balance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like if, if you were to balance it, you would have to put like a ridiculous prerequisite that would almost yeah. be. Not and then, and then that like, point, yeah, it's yeah. probably not good. <laughs> like um, Bellas Barge, almost, you know, like his his yeah. power is quite so 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 strong, but it's the card itself is so unusable to the point that it's not not really viable. Yeah, I feel like yeah. those cards are either like broken as hell or, or they're completely useless. There's no in between. Yeah, it's it's, it's really almost impossible to find a middle ground with, yeah. with an ability that's that overpowered. Okay. Then allow me to try. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you will try. What <laughs> <laughs> so what if uh, with Bomb Bazaar, instead of getting a second turn, you just get a second battle phase. So you don't get to draw another card, you don't t- get to untap your mana, but you can attack twice with your guys. And then you restrict that to once per duel. Hmm. That's almost. Do you lose afterwards? No, you don't lose. I think see, that's almost even better than. Oh, I wouldn't say it's even better because it's like you don't get to summon your twin cannon, for example. Right, right, mm. but but I think uh, I think that wasn't really the problem with Bombazar, um, because because when you play Bombazar, you usually play him when you have a field big enough already. 
Yeah, but then the thing, because to me, like what makes it ridiculous, what lets you really abuse the win condition is that you can, you get to reuse your seven mana. So you basically get 14 mana worth in one turn. Yeah. Uh, I see what you're saying. Um, I'm, to be honest, like, I, I never really used Bombers are that much because it was so hard to get a copy, right? Yeah. But, <laughs> but like, yeah, you, the ideal situation is you Bombers are and then you Twin Cannon, but you wouldn't always have the two in your hand. I, I think, like, if you play the Bombers are, that's already so powerful if you have a second battle phase. Because yeah, I, I tend to agree. The pressure that you put down, like, I would almost, I would almost always play it on turn seven, I think. Like, depending on, obviously, it depends on the board state, but say you have, like, two two creatures out or something. Yeah. Just play the bombers out. It's, it's, you put so much pressure on. If you have a drink out in your hand, the next turn, you, you still win, right? Kind of. So um, not as simple as that. Ah, uh, right, right, right. I see what you mean. So um, you still attack twice with Bombazar. So rather than playing Twin Cannon on the second turn, you just play Twin Cannon on the third turn. Yeah, because they still have to clear your board. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, Point well taken. It's... it's okay, what if... Twice thing. What if you... Okay, no, actually, yeah. I was going to say, like, what if um, <laughs> you, you discard your hand then after you summon Bombazar, but then we're starting to venture into Balisk Bodge territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's like, because the effect is so overwhelming, it's really hard to find that balance. Yeah, gaining, gaining an extra turn is, is yeah, pre pretty busted as an effect. Yeah. I guess I'm out of a job, is what you're telling me. Okay. Don't worry, DM plays has done nothing wrong. <laughs> 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 oh jeez! <laughs> I'm actually quite interested in seeing how um, how the magic kind of meta game shaped up, how they dealt with like game balance and power creep. My understanding is magic uses rotation, or at least the yeah. main form, their main standard uses yeah, rotation. I think they do. I think they do, um, which is always easier to to sort of balance in the sense that like by the time. People have exploited it enough. You just get rid of the whole, whole set of cards, and then you introduce a new one. Yeah, I think that happens quite a lot, right? Like, um, oh my god, going back to Pokemon when Lysander, when Shaman EX came out, Lysander's trump card was already on Death's door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, like the format, or rather, the format was over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you had that one format where they both with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Let's not talk about it. <laughs> this is a great time. <laughs> I had I had one more um, like topic that right. could Let's be quite it. interesting. Um, you know, with with kind of DM plays and and Hearthstone, there's a, there's a lot of like movement towards gi digital card games. Yes, and with that, you know, brings a lot of pros and cons, but one of the more unique aspects of, of that is kind of the introduction of uh, you can create cards with really cool and interesting, unique effects. Um, like, for example, in DM plays, you, let's take Bombazar again, <laughs> since we're, we love talking about him so much. <laughs> well, this is a dual masters podcast. <laughs> um, is having the, uh, the effect activates only on your turn 10 or, or above. Um, like back in the TCG, right, right, right. you can't really keep track on like what turn it is. It's pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, agreed. Um, okay. But but with with it being on, like an online game, uh, you can do I'm that. Sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Andrew, but like going back to the schoolyard, it's like, okay, next turn I can play Bomb Bazaar. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> turn is this? It's like, wait, wait, how much mana do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see <laughs> 10 mana. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, continue. Um, yeah, but that, that's a good example of like cards that, you know, there's like a whole dimension of new card fix that you can have. Um, an example from Hearthstone would be, no, that's not a good example, so there's also like pros and cons to this, is having like random creature destruction. I love Hearth Hearthstone, always loves doing that. This is uh, introduce uh, RNG uh, into their games. Not again. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can hear Kelvin groaning. Yeah. Uh, and they've Kelvin, kind of... That's they, why I quit that game in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> they've kind of did that already with uh, Galzark, where 
if one of your zombie dragons dies, then you kill a random. Oh, it's actually not random. It's the lowest, but but if you have two two creatures that they have the same power, then it's random. So like stuff like that, um, kind of you can create yeah, new cards. Yeah. yeah, no, I definitely um, I definitely think Hearthstone has really explored that quite well. Like I mm-hmm. think the discover mechanic. That's yeah, probably one of, my, mechanic. one of my favorite ones. Mm-hmm. Um, Wait, what does that do? It's uh, kind of like oh, search yeah. and Duel masters, but um. That the cards aren't from your deck. If that makes sense. Oh, yeah, so you so, just so it's kind of like what Game and Watch does in Smash. It just like pulls it out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> imagine like um, imagine like a card that discover like three nature, and it would just pop up three random nature cards. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Um, which I think is pretty cool. Like just things like that. It's like sort of a controlled RNG. Yeah, um, yeah. controlled RNG. But things mm-hmm. things you can only do online is interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, you can really push some boundaries, hmm. but but on the on the flip side, like I I've also been thinking like, like for 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 games, like what what's stopping us from putting everything everything online, and what can we do in a physical game that you can't do right in um, in a in a digital game, you know? You can't. I think. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I think. Um... All the merchandising opportunities, <laughs> like a whole <laughs> industry built on it. You know, we wouldn't want Ultra Pro and Dragon Shield to close their door their doors tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking more like play interaction, but that's also a good one. <laughs> <laughs> like the sort of the sort of uh, gameplay that you can't really get online. Yeah, uh, no, that that's that's a really important part of like, card uh, games. I lost to myself. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Andrew, do you want to tell the story real quick? Sorry, sorry guys, it's oh. another Pokemon story, but it's really good. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How much depth I should go into? This is surface level depth, just real quick. <laughs> just very real second. quick. <laughs> okay, so, so there's this there's this Pokemon tournament that I played once and there was this guy where basically like the matchup was already decided. Like he he so in Pokemon there's this weakness. And I played a deck where like the chances of me winning was like almost hundred percent. Alright, relax, um, relax. But, but every time every time like his, his Pokemon gets knocked out or he, he he makes a play that, you know, doesn't quite uh, knock out my Pokemon, he's, he he always blames it that it's his um it's his play that's making the difference rather than just just the matchup. So so the so the phrase that he uses is I lost to myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of noble in a way where he's uh, he's trying to take responsibility <laughs> instead of blaming everything but himself, which is what I would do. <laughs> it's like no matter what you did, you can't win. <laughs> Yeah, Andrew, your deck was very well constructed that tournament. <laughs> no perfect. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, where were we, Andrew? You were in the middle of something. Oh, I can't remember though. Uh, digital card games, right? So yeah, um, digital versus physical. Oh, so player interactions. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's um like a huge reason why we play card games in the first place is mm. it's um. It brings brings people together, as as cheesy as that sounds. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I think it's like, I think it's really important that people put like those. Uh, I I I don't know exactly what it is like the, the some mechanics that force interaction, like for example, a game that we all love, like Hanabi. Yeah. That's mm. we tried to play that online, um, but it's it's really not the same mm. as playing it in real life. Like that kind of game i think i don't know if you can port some features over to yeah to, you, uh, tcg i'm not sure if it's possible but you don't um, you don't have um yeah. the physical reactions yeah. enjoyable <laughs> like yeah, when, you, yeah. when you do when you break into like all your shield triggers you don't have the reactions <laughs> <laughs> it's like holy oh again god <laughs> <laughs> Or it's like I broke into three aqua servers. Surely there can't be a fourth one. <laughs> yeah. Surely, surely. <laughs> um, yeah. 
I think also, um, this is going to sound like a really stupid one, but I think it's a very valid one. Card feel. It's just fun to handle the cards. Mm. And, yeah. um, and shuffling and cards. And, and, and the sound they make, like when you put down a, a sleeved card, there's like a clack sound, you know? Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so yeah. satisfying. Yeah, it's like ASMR. Especially, yeah. especially when you have a map as well. Yeah, would you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you guys be keen for that? Some uh, the gauntlet cards on Matt's ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh my gosh, has it has it really come to this? Oh. <laughs> I, I hear about? ASMR is very popular Has our content run dry already? <laughs> <laughs> Surely not. Yes, I think it's something. And, um... Oh, crap. I forgot. I re- yeah, but- <laughs> this big, I remember back then, I would, I would, like, watch deck profiles just to hear people, like, count their cards. Or, or like, lay their, ca- lay their cards on the on the mat. It's so satisfying. <laughs> wait, 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 we, do that, we do that ourselves. <laughs> the deck profile. The deck profile. Yeah, the deck profile. We do that ourselves. Like, all the time. It, feels, it makes you feel good when you see your, your deck you know, laid out really nicely on a playmat. Yeah. yeah. And then there's so, also um, the, the, what do you call that shuffle? The, um, the is riffle. It, is a riffle shuffle? That uh, feels nice. Feels really nice. Yeah. Yeah, especially with nice sleeves. You have to have nice sleeves. Hmm. I feel like there's a galaxy brain meme in here. Uh, you know, the smallest brain is like, watch the gauntlet to get Duel Masters deck ideas. And then, and then the bigger one is like, watch the gauntlet to see physical Duel Masters cards. And then the biggest one is like, watch the gauntlet to hear the sound of sleeves hitting a mat. <laughs> That's the stuff. That's the, that's the content people come for. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, so was there anything else you wanted to talk about, Andrew, or, or Kelvin, special guest? Oh, I'm good. I'm just here to enjoy the show. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess uh, that wraps things up this episode. Uh, we hope to have more podcasts with us in the future, and we also hope to bring back Kelvin at some point in time. Um, obviously, if you guys enjoy the content, let us know, and thank you so much for listening. Uh, take care. <laughs>